Crash Avenue and Springdale, which is on some interesting tales. Um, so, uh, let me just hand it over to Rachel. Thank you. All right. first Jack's Abbey event, so bear with me. However, I'm very excited. Um, so yeah, I'm, I work for Jack's Abbey in Springdale Brewing. Uh, they are intertwined. Jack's Abbey is our craft lager side, and then Springdale is our ale-focused brewery, so everything else. Um, so Jack's Abbey was the first. They started in 2011. Um, it started out with three brothers. Their family ran a successful ice business uh, called Springdale Ice and Coal, which is what brought the name Springdale. And they started in 2011. Um, they, so they worked summers um, selling ice with their family business, and they wanted to start their own company at one point. So that was their big dream. And Jack, the owner, one of the three brothers, he went to Germany, learned all about Bavaria, all about the beer lagering process, and he was passionate about it. So he brought that back to Boston. They started brewing at this place called Morton Street in Framingham, right down the street from the brewery. They got really successful, and they opened their own, their own brewery in 2011. And this brewery is a typical German beer hall style. Long, long wooden tables, they have a fantastic food menu, and it just brings you to like the German beer hall style. Um, they serve the beers in steins. Ooh. It's a great place to check out. So, so highly question. recommend. Um, I have a question long, here. How long is it offered to? What's the availability for this? Sorry. What's the availability for the uh, German? Is it like August to October? Or? You're talking about the lagering process? No, I meant you're talking about the German. Seasonal, right? Yeah. Yeah, so what's the availability? You want my store on the block. Oh, so their core lineup, the Jacks, is available year round. So their house lager, is that the question you're asking? I meant the seasonal, but yeah. Yeah, so the house lager, the post ship pilsner, those are all available year round, and then they do seasonals. Um, so Copper Legend is their most popular seasonal, their Oktoberfest, which we will discuss and try. Um, that is, was historically brewed in March, back in Bavaria, and stored in cold caves mm. until October. Um, so, fun fact there, but we'll get back to that one. Um, so yeah, the three brothers still own the brewery, and they work full time in the brewery. So Jack, he is the master brewer, he comes up with all the beers. Um, Eric is in charge of finances, and Sam is in charge of sales. So they all work together to make everything happen and it's been over 10 years. Where did the Abbey part come from? So, I'm pretty sure that Abby is his wife, and that's where it comes from, Jack's Abbey. Uh, Isn't that cute? A oh, little romance involved? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, so his the, wife was a brewer. No, she's not involved. Small box, Abby, and Belgium. No, and so I'll give a little bit of history about, about, the log, about loggers in general. So, um, over 200 years ago, um, Bavaria, they started lagers by brewing, by brewing the beers and storing them in, in caves for years to, to create these lagers, to create, instead of an ale, to create a much more balanced um, beer. So, I have my notes here. Um, so, the low temperatures in the caves, they slowed the fermentation down. Um, so the, it was upwards of four to six weeks, and it created a smoother, crisper, more balanced beer. So um, at Jack's, they quality control test every single batch that comes in. They have a whole science lab in Jack's Abbey, which I just got to experience myself recently. They, have, they, they look at yeast under a microscope. They make sure every single batch that comes out is clear, clean, balanced. It's really awesome stuff that they're doing there. So I really appreciate the work that goes into it. And all of the malts and hops that they use are imported from Bavaria. Wow. So it's the truest to form German lagers you're gonna get on this side of the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. All we use is our water, it's the only difference. Wow. Yeah, so really, really awesome stuff. 
Um, so Springdale originated about four years ago, and it started as Jack's Abbey's barrel age series. So they just started throwing stuff into barrels and seeing what would happen with it. However, you know, barrel aged beers take a long time to create and they couldn't make a profit off of beers they were waiting years to ferment, so they decided to make IPAs and kettle sours and stouts to kind of make up for everything else. But we still make a lot of barrel-aged sours and barrel-aged bourbon beers, which you guys will try later. Ooh, well, which one is this? Loggers of the World. So right now, we're starting with the Loggers of the World Japan. This wow. is from Jack's Abbey. Ooh. This is a rotating series where they feature a different country every couple of months. Ooh. So Japan is the current uh, the current country we're focusing on. This is a rice lager. It's brewed with green tea, yuzu fruit, and sriracha ace hops. Nice. So you said like, when all of a I was like, mm, this is good, but I was like, this doesn't taste like a German lager. It's definitely unique. Yeah, yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's brewed with green tea. First one? Is this the first one? Or is it lager? Oh, no, no, no. They, they've been doing it for at least a year or two. Um, the previous ones were Australia and Brazil, for instance. Oh. I'm not sure what's next on the lineup. They're still trying to figure that out. So, yeah, the Loggers of the World Japan is brewed with green tea. You get a lot of the green tea notes on there. Yeah. You get a lot of that. And then yuzu fruit is a hybrid fruit from Japan, originally from China. But this it's a basically a hybrid of a lemon, a lime, and a grapefruit. So wow. you get yeah, it's like a mixture of all three. Um, fun fact, people in Japan um, they use the yuzu fruit in their teas, in their black teas. They also use it in their bath as a form of relax a relaxant. So kind of like a bath bomb. Uh -huh. It's a multi-purposeful fruit. Yeah. And then Sirachi Ace Hops, which are from Japan. And these have a very acidic nature, lemon, um, coriander, um, a little bit of dill. So those are the- That's awesome, because you don't see too many American breweries replicating Japanese beer. Exactly. It's rare, it's difficult. Exactly, and they actually, they traveled to Japan for this. Whoa. And they worked with Numa Zoo's Baird Brewing Co. Ooh. to get the Sriracha Ace hops. So whenever they make a beer, they go to that country to get the hops from small family um, hop farms. Mm. So every year they go to Ger Germany, um, Jack does and the team, and they procure hops from small family owned farms because that's what they really are passionate about is small family owned brands. So that's they're, dedication. They're, yeah, it's dedication. They spend like full time, 48 plus hours every week, all three of these guys in the brewery. So this is my favorite beer right now with Jax. I think it's unique. It's wonderful, yeah. easy to drink. What do you guys think? Good? It's very nice. Yeah, awesome. I thought it'd be a good start because it's like nice and light. Get those palates warmed up. It is five, five percent. Let me double check. Looks like 5.9. Is that up there? Oh, that, might, there. that might be an accurate. Let me double check. I want to give you guys the right answer. Your bonus said Beverage Island. Beverage Island. And holiday beverage. This man's new job starting this week. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It is 5.5%, five 5.5%. Five and a half percent. That is the first one. Anyone have any questions about this one? Oh, it's really nice. So is it draft only or? No, no. Um, so I actually did my first day in Staten Island today, and a lot of the um, package stores I went to like had had Japan. So holiday beverage, beverage I still, island. I still have Japanese beer like style. I'm like, let me Let's send it push out. That out. It's unique. You don't people, see it. People so. put it in the import section as well. When it's Which is great. A rare, unique beer. People want it. Exactly. It's doing very well. <laughs> so I love this beer. So you've been to the brewery, uh, obviously. Yes. Yes. 
I went a couple weeks ago, I was there for a week, and I learned every single process of how everything works. I spent an hour or so in the science lab just just way over my head with what they were talking about, but they put so much effort into what they do, and that's what makes me so passionate about it, is the work that they put into it. Because lagers are difficult to make. You know, they take longer than ales. Right. And yeah, it takes a lot to be like just pure German. But from a monetary sense, that also affects it because you can't turn it out. That's the thing. Like, so before they were selling 16 ounce six pack beers and they weren't making like anything off of it because they're putting so much like money and effort right. into the right. brewing process. Mm -hmm. So they just switched to 16 ounce four packs, but still for $8.99 a four pack. That's not bad at That's all. a great wow. price. That's very good. Cool. Great price. Price. That's that alley. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw that today. That's the pricing. <laughs> could be wrong. Could be wrong. Again, first time, first time in Staten Island ever. By the way, so thank you. Well, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. So I'm not sure what the next logger of the world is going to be. It was supposed to be Estonia, Ooh. but they just canceled all of the December releases. I'm not oh, sure no. why. So the next flavor will be early next year, for sure. Oh, we gotta put that on the calendar. Absolutely. How, how's the town of uh, Framingham? Is it's so cute. It's it's a really cute, quiet town right outside of Boston, and everyone knows Jax. Like it's everyone is like loyal, super fans of Jax, and yeah, they just they thrive in New England. So I'm. I'm anxious to keep building the brand. What's your favorite Jack's beer? Right now it's the Japan, honestly. It's so unique. But you know, I can always crush a house lager or four. <laughs> so next, next we have the Munich Fest beer. So the Munich Fest is an unfiltered amber lager. So it's a Keller beer. Um, Keller beer means it's unpasteurized. So, um, basically, a Keller beer means cellar beer, which means that it's stored in very cold temperatures in order for it to ferment and age. Mm -hmm. um, Ooh, very aromatic. Yes. So, decoction is a huge factor in Jack's oh, Abbey. That's delicious. And that is mm. a form of. Wow. Um, it's a form of aging the beer, but basically it's when you remove about a third of the mash, um, and then you heat it up and you return it to the mash. And basically that allows any CO2 to escape from secondary fermentation. Um, and basically it, it makes it cloudy with yeast and any nutrients that haven't settled out. Um, or filtered out, so it gives it that little bit of haziness. Um, it has a subtle sweetness, a mild bitterness. It's somewhat similar to a Marzen, but lighter, much lighter. And these are true to form, you know, lagers that they made it's in like, Munich. Oh, so What do you think? Oh, it's really nice. It's very nice. It's like it's like it just got so many different notes in it. It just mm -hmm. like fills fills up the whole mouth. Yeah, yeah. It's a good one. So this is a Keller beer series. It rotates every couple of months. Um, so this one will be around until about January. Um, but it's a great way to kind of end out the Oktoberfest season. Yeah. Kind of segue into something a little bit lighter, but still similar in style. Do we have any questions? So this still takes about three to four months fermentation? Yes. Between the heating and the cooling and the reheating? So yeah, all the lagers take about four to six weeks. Oh, yeah. yeah. So where is this one stored? Like in a, in a fridge? Or did you guys find a cave and No, put it in no, it? no. So it's it's in big, big, big barrels at the brewery. Oh. But um, part of decoction is having like an unplugged hole. They call it a bunghole, but ah. I feel weird saying that. So, oh well, yeah, we don't need to do the Beavis and Butthead shit. <laughs> so yeah, it's basically uh, an unplugged hole that allows like air to get in, and it helps t 
to, for CO2 to get out. Uh -huh. um, and it just helps with like the purification of the lager. Is that like a German technique? It is a super German technique that is not necessarily needed in this day and age, but they, they use it to even to make the lagers even more traditional to ger to German lagers. So it's just a form, it's a form of um, like purifying the lagers. Mm. I'm still trying to understand decoction to be honest with you. Like I have learned a bunch about it and I'm like, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But I'm not a brewer, so. <laughs> if I, yeah, think please. About, the thing about decoction is that it's like a, Oh, I don't need the mic yet. <laughs> oh, I need that spotlight on me. Um, the thing with decoction is that it's like, from my understanding, it's it's a pretty old process that folks don't really use that much anymore because it's like it's an, an incredibly expensive process time wise. Time consuming. So the reason I bring that up is just to show the care and like for the process and the product that Jack Zabby puts into it. The fact that anybody who's any beer you see this decoction mash, like like it's produced, good. like they're putting in time and energy they don't need to, and then a lot of folks poo-poo like, because it's like, why are you doing that? It's, it's like a way of it's, it's like a natural carbonation as well. And it just goes back to everything that Jack stands for, which is like tradition. They want to be as close to German style, old tradition as possible. And it's also about accessibility, so making a lager that anyone can drink at any point at, at a great price point, you know? So that's another part of it as well. Oh, so I this beer. I know it's Jack's Abbey had a partnership or a deal with Boston Celtics. Yes. Ooh. Yes. So about a year ago, we solidified a we are the official beer of the Boston Celtics. Wow. So we Damn. have an entire brewery in the stadium, and um, they serve the house lager, the post shift. They have everything, Jack's Abbey. Um, and that's huge for us. Huge now I gotta go to see it, Celtics here. I know, I'm waiting for my free tickets. I'm wondering when that's gonna happen. I don't know, Do maybe the rest. <laughs> I'll hook you up, I'll hook you up. So yeah, that's a great, like selling tool for me. So next we have the Copper Legend. This is Jack's Abbey's best selling seasonal by far. Um, this is our Oktoberfest. It's our Mars and Lager. So a little backstory on the Mar Mars and Lager um, from Bavaria. Um, in 1533, there was a decree signed where you could not the throw right, beer. The right hash kabot. There you go. The right hash kabot. What he said. It's the German beer, German beer purity law. Originally, it was barley malt, water, and hops. Then they realized, you know, you need yeast to make it work. Mm -hmm. And now it's just four ingredients. However, I don't know if it's still instated because in Bavaria, I read up on it on Wikipedia that Bavaria voted in 2015 to repeal it. So I don't know if it yeah, still stands because it, still stands, it because they really do want to get rid of it because it's like this is very archaic. It's like yeah, 500 yeah. years, yeah. and the and the changing beer market. They're like, we got to try something different. Definitely. So the decree basically said you could not brew beer between the months of April to, to September. So um, obviously, beer like brewers were super frustrated with this. So they decided to brew a beer in March and store it in the caves until fall and it came and that's where the Oktoberfest came from. Um, they used Munich, Vienna, uh, Munich and Vienna malts um, to create this beer and it's it's medium body, it's toasty, um, hints of caramel in there. Um, you get a little toffee graham cracker. Um, we're steadily on a lot of lists online for like best Oktoberfests, and it just shows the numbers. Um, it's definitely, definitely one of our best sellers. Yeah. So. We do very well with this. I started like right towards the end of the Oktoberfest season, so I haven't gotten to sell too much. This is my uh, favorite. Song. Yeah. The fact that they call it copper. Do they put it in copper bags? <coughs> See, I don't think so. I think that the name just comes from the color of the oh, liquid. Yeah. yeah. It just comes I mean, from... I mean, I've seen copper bags. So yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I, I think it'd be called a copper still, but I don't know. I think a still is usually if you're brewing, yeah. if you're making liquor. So my new manager has a red beard. We call him the Copper Legend, <laughs> and it goes over very well. It's, it's a good, good bar joke. Spillane. Spillane, yeah. It's a great guy. It's a great guy. Oh, strawberry shark. Oh no. <laughs> This, if I, I think Copper Legend is, is oh, one so of my favorite beers from Jack's Abbey, and it's also, like, <laughs> it is practically legendary, like, when it comes it out, is. it's just because it's such an affordable beer, but it's made so well, yep. like, y'all just really hit this perfect balance mm -hmm. between, like, being a beer that's not ridiculously overpriced, yep. um, but it's super delicious and super drinkable. And it's just exactly what you're looking for in a bar setting, like a place beer. Yep. It's just it's so good. This is actually the first time I've had it this season. Oh, yeah. Which I'm just like, God damn it, it took me so long. Hopefully but. it's consistent from a year prior. Mm -hmm. Any questions about Octolipos? Oh, yeah. So this is, uh, this is what this is called Copper. Copper Legend. It's Copper Legend. Artisan. And it's the, your Oktoberfest? Yes. Yes. Oh. Best selling seasonal mm -hmm. by a It's long very shot. nice. Thank you. I burned myself. No, I'm just it do, it really does taste it really does taste like um, one of the places on Staten Island if you want to like get like traditional German style beers is called Kilmeyer's. Yeah, right. someone to recommend that. Yeah, say. yeah. Great. I know the guy down there. He's great, great selection of like German beers. Nuremberger is very. Lovely. Yeah, yeah Nuremberger. I always forget them about the Nuremberger. But if you need, if you think the, the, the man's name down at uh, Kilmar's is Ken Triado. Oh my gosh, okay. Good to know. Oh, I am getting leads <laughs> everywhere. Is this the coconut? Yeah. So what would you say the difference Wonderful. is between the color of your, that we just have more coconut. Between the Munich Fest mm -hmm. and the Marzen? So, they are pretty similar. However, the Munich Fest is much is much lighter um, in body and flavor, so you're gonna get like a lot more like caramel toffee notes from the Marzen from the Oktoberfest, and the Munich is is much lighter in, in body. But they are they are pretty similar. Yeah, I think the Munich is heavier. You do? Yes. Is this the Munich? Which one's the Munich? The Munich I think is the one I really know. Oh, thank you. Because, like, Munich, it's not even, like, I would think it's almost, like... Is this the Munich? Yeah. I'll grab this. I like it. it. Oh, this is a sour. Characteristic-wise, that's usually how Munichs are typically in, like, the Mars. Weird <laughs> this is a sour that we're just Ooh, we're having right the now. The coconut is. Ooh. It's very nice. Here. I don't I'll even taste the coconut. A little bit better later. No, it's okay. But, uh, I was, no, but you're I, right. I was, I was trying to like, figure it out before I tasted the beers, and now that I'm tasting them, I feel like maybe maybe it's like what you said about that. Uh, the just the yeah. 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 Maybe it's that. Maybe that's what because of that. Like I feel like Munich has. It's definitely so. It's yeah. It's unpasteurized, so it's gonna be. It's gonna have more like yeast leftover. Yeah, I like both of them, but I think the I think the um, the powder lemon is the smoother, like lighter. Let me get more info on that. I'll get back to you. But like from what I've learned, like the like Munich tests are typically lighter body, but. But you're right though, like the manifest is darker in color than the copper. So look at that. So transitioning to Springdale now, um, we have a coconut castaway. And this is an oak barrel aged golden ale with coconut and pineapple. So it starts off as a golden ale. It's aged for six to eight months. Wow. Wow. In a blend of wine and bourbon barrels. So we do some of it in wine and some of it in bourbon. And then we mix them together to make the perfect mixture of the two. Um, so it really, like, I, I don't get like the really strong fruit taste, but it's a very well balanced. It's, subtle. it's a very well balanced, like, ale. Sour ale. So, so after it's aged for six to eight months, then the pineapple is added. And then after that, the coconut flakes. So yeah, it is definitely subtle, 
um, the, the fruit flavoring. Um, and I think that has to do with the wine barrel age, the, the wine barrel age, because all of those yeasts um, are getting filtered into the beer. Um, so with with oak barrels, wine barrels, all of that yeast is still is still in the barrel. Whereas bourbon barrel aged, those yeasts get like burned off. Um, so that's what makes it a sour ale is all of those leftover yeasts in the oak barrels. Um, so, so yeah, those those yeasts are lactobacillus and um, pediococcus. Those those are kind of what make it a sour uh, a sour ale. So it starts as a golden and it becomes it becomes a sour. So it's six and a half percent. So it's not it's not too high in ABV, but you get all of those different flavors. What do you guys think of this one? I really like it. It's a lot better than the one sour. Oh, yeah. That's what a sour would do, I feel like. Certain, certain sour. Yeah, it's definitely a sour. Yeah, it's a lot better than It's a lot better than right now. They got this thing on the menu. What's it called? Uh, Magnified Blue Lemonade. Oh, I tried that. It is. I, I couldn't t I couldn't stand it. It was like the color is really off putting. I mean, it tasted okay, but it looks like I'm drinking Windex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this one this one takes I feel like it takes a little bit longer, um, maybe than the Magnify because it does it takes six to eight months to to ferment um, in the barrels. So, do you have that? I want you to try. Oh, this is the coconut. Oh, for me. Certainly a sour. You know, I haven't even had this one yet, guys. I've learned about it. Haven't had it. Wow. It's definitely sour. You can feel it right here. And the coconut is definitely like very, very subtle. I get more pineapple than coconut. Subtle, so maybe not. Yeah, so the pineapple's added first. So you're definitely you're definitely getting a little pineapple. Yeah. Any questions about this one? Yeah, so like I said, it started as a barrel age program through Jack's that they decided to expand upon. So they still do a lot of barrel aged sours and um, like bourbon ales, but they started focusing more on IPAs, stouts anything in the ale category to kind of like make up for what Jack's Abbey didn't have. So when I'm out in the market, I, I can sell every, every style, essentially, which makes Springdale so great. Springdale's currently attached to Jack's Abbey, but they're looking for a new space to kind of separate themselves, be closer to downtown Boston where the younger kids are. Because Springdale has a, has a younger uh, demographic. Um, Jack's Abbey is kind of like mid-30s, it's kind of our range for loggers, and then Springdale has like a mid-20s kind of demographic. I don't know, it says So they want to be closer to the college, the city, to like accommodate for those people. Um, but yeah, we have some really good sour, um, wine barrel aged sour program coming out there? in the big bottles. Which is it has to be at the right account. It has to be at the right place. We don't have to buy those anymore, but they're so good. It's such high quality. It's just buying the right tip for those. I I know that so two rows has has area two. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of similar. Very similar. So you think that's a trend that's going on and people are like, hey, wait, two. You can also make these types of beer. Are you going to go for beer A? Yep. So I mean, we're just trying to get to the floor of the market. Yeah. I've noticed that trend. I've been in the beer fit industry for about three years. I've noticed that trend where big brands will come up with another brand that they consider like a separate entity, but have whatever their brand doesn't have. So. It was good for us to have Springdale to have other options um, and still be like hit with the trends and what's going on. Like the bloggers are always in style. I feel like you know, like IPAs are super popular, but people still like look for loggers. And people that have been drinking IPAs for like four years, their palates are destroyed, and they just want a good lager. Where I'm kind of at. I just want a nice, nice lager at the night. Just to have yeah. Still love an IPA though. Still love it. Um, so I think that's what we have next. Uh, good segue. I think this is the suck
Sucker for Lust. Yeah? So we got Sucker for Lust. So this is through Springdale. This is a rotating New England IPA series. So every month we make a new New England IPA and we work with a band. A, di a different band from wherever in the United States. And we collaborate with this band to make the New England IPA that is right for them. So, Sucker for Lust is a collaboration with the Macrotones. Anyone heard of the Macrotones? Anybody? I, I had it either. I had it either. So, the micro Macrotones started in Boston in 2007, and they are a 10 unit um, funk, soul funk, and rhythm band. Um, and they wanted South African hops in their IPA. Wow. So, we used Southern Passion hops and El Dorado hops. So Southern Passion Hops, um, they, hold on a second, they are um, a cross of Czech, Zaz, Sass, and German Heller Tower Hops. So it's a mix of the two, so they come from Europe. Um, and these are like, so Passion, sorry, Southern Passion Hops, they have a tropical fruit flavor. So Passion Fruit, Guava, Coconut, that's what you're gonna get from those hops. And then El Dorado is also pineapple, super tropical hops as well. So you're definitely going to get a hazy tropical IPA, six and a half percent. And we worked with the Macrotones to make it exactly what they wanted. And if you look at a can, it'll have their playlist and all the info about the band. So it's kind of a way to highlight the band as well. What do you guys think? It's good. Nice. Solid IPA. Oh yeah, definitely. I love New England IPAs. I love it, but like, but still, where you feel the like the you taste the hops after it's not just like a juice bomb. Uh, it's like you actually taste the hops. There you go. I actually almost brought a can in for like a demo to be like, this is what it looks like. But we change it up every month. So the next band is Proto Martyr. They're a punk band from the Northwest. I had never heard of them as well. It's kind of like a way for these like small bands to be like be highlighted and get some exposure. So I really like that. I love music. Do they have it perform like when you're releasing the You know, I think that they do collaborate for events because they're from Boston. So when I went to their website today to check it out, they like had Springdale like in big letters and like here's the promo video we made with them. So check out the Macrotones, like check out their website. Um, we definitely work very closely with them to make an IPA that they are proud of and that they can promote. Yeah, and then they promote it at the places they play at and then we get business. It's like a win-win. It's really nice. Yeah. Still love a good IPA. How many IPAs do they have that rather Sorry? How many IPAs are so is this year year round? You said it's collaborating. So yeah. What what, what IPA do they have like year round? Wow, so that's the Springdale like IPA taste. is the year round yeah. IPA. Oh, like good. Good. It's just IPA, so it's called. It's the year round, and it's a mixture of East Coast and West Coast IPA. So it has the haze of an East Coast IPA, but then it has the bitterness and the hop flavor mm -hmm. and the back end of a West Coast IPA. It's a really good mixture of the two. I'm getting like a like a smoke like a smoky sense to this one. Is there like a smoky? It's not element? smoky dagger, is it? <laughs> no, it's no, it's a can. Mm. So this sucker for lust should really just be like a tropical IPA. Um, so passion fruit, guava, pineapple. Those are kind of the flavors from the hops that you should be getting. But other than that, I don't no, know. It's no like, smoke. Oh. No smoke. It's really nice. Yeah. So the Springdale IPA is your I've like I tasted oh, I like a, like like a smoky element to it. Maybe with the next one, smoke and dagger. Ah, we'll, get, we'll definitely get some smoke with the next one. So we just have the IPA year round, and then this is a rotating New England IPA. And then we do stouts, sours. In general, like the amount of beers that Springdale. So with Springdale, there's more um, variety. Uh -huh. So like we're releasing more varietals. Um, but as a whole, like 
yeah, there's definitely more releases with Springdale. Um, Jax tries to keep it as mainstream and like streamlined as possible. Um, but that being said, Jax has a lot of different rotating beers. Like we do the Keller beer, we do the Lager to the World. There's a lot of different rotating beers. There's just a lot going on with most of the brand house. Number one volume skew for house lager. House number one. 100%. 100%. Blue. Blue. It has the purple highlight. It has a purple. It has yes, the purple highlight. On the can. All right. All right. A little strip. Not seeing it. It's a little strip. So next we have Smoke and Dagger. Uh, I come from New Jersey, and uh, surprisingly enough, the Smoke and Dagger is one of their top products in New Jersey. It's a black lager. So essentially, same process as a lager, but you use darker malts and darker hops to create this beer. So you're going to get a smoky, a chocolatey flavor, um, roasted. Yeah, um, it's, it's unique. There's not a whole lot of black lagers out there in the market. But it's very popular um, in New Jersey, at least. It's one of our core beers, so we have it year round. Um, I don't know why it just smells cold. To me. Smells cold? Well, it was it was uh, fermented cold, so <laughs> so good connection there. <laughs> this one's nice. It's this five point six percent, and yeah, it goes through a similar process as the other lagers. Just use darker malts and hops to create a chocolatey, smoky goodness. <laughs> yes, yes. So they, they just, they use darker malts for it, and those are those are smoked prior to fermentation. It's palatable. Yeah. It's like approachable. It works with the dark malt. No, it's not the end No, it's not the end Yeah, like a brown beer. Yes. Some of them are like, yes. Yeah. And they're just like so heavy on the, the back end. Yeah. It's like, oh my god, full. This is like super light and has like a regular lager sort of aftertaste, but you still get that smoke. No, it's like, it's actually like really light. Yeah. It's not that, yeah. It's not opaque. And that's what I feel about the, the stout from Springdale. It's super light on the back end, which I love. I don't like heavy stouts where I'm just like full. Do you guys like the smoking dagger? Yes. To be honest, it's fun. Yeah? It's, I like it. I like it. Yes, I do. It's not my go-to like style, but they do a really good job with it, for sure. This is red one. Is it? Wait, what kind of black water do you like? I'm really bringing a stick. I just have three. Oh, okay. Now you're seeing yourself. I appreciate it. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other black ones? Ye
The other one was like, we, you, gosh, what was it? The, the one, coconut castaway? Yeah, the coconut castaway. The one that's half and half. Half and half. So if like you have six barrels, it'd be three, three bourbon, three other ones. Three wine, yep. And then they mix it together and make the perfect concoction out of the two. However, this one is one, so the maple brig is one third bourbon barrels and two thirds maple barrels. These maple barrels are used to make bourbon maple syrup. However, when we add our liquid into it, it creates a super maple y, um, like roasted bourbon barrel aged stout. So, so it's a breakfast stout. It was named after the Brigadero Brazilian d dessert. Basically, a Brigadero is Brazilian's truffle uh, cupcake, essentially. It's a super popular treat in Brazil. That's where the name for this came from. So you're getting a lot of coffee, lactose, and mocha in this. Brigadero? Uh, Brigadero. I'm half Brazilian. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> Maybe you can tell them. I make these. I I've made these at home. Oh, nice. And I've fallen in love with this beer because it yeah. really goes well. No, I learned today that it's based. It's it's based off of the Brazilian treat brigadeiro, which is essentially a truffle cupcake. I still care about Halloween. So I get like a hint of spice. Yeah. Um, so that's coming from the whiskey, the wooden whiskey. So when it's we use wet bourbon barrels straight from a distillery, which really exudes vanilla um, and coconut flavors and wooden whiskey. So that spice you're getting is probably from the whiskey barrel. And then, and then yeah, the maple syrup barrels give it that maple leaf flavor. Um, we we age it for three months, and then we add the cocoa nibs. Oh. And uh, the Brazilian roast coffee. So all of that is added after aging, and it brings all of that flavor to the forefront. Um, what, so after the aging, it is eight and a half percent. At any given time, how many beers is Jack's Abbey Um, that's a good question. I would say so. We have about six or seven core brands. Our brewery is massive. Like there, there is at least 20 massive barrels at a time. So I would say everything's brewed in house. Everything's brewed in house, and we contract brew as well. Are you contract we brew? contract brew for a couple brands. So we have immense space. We have more to work with. Um, contract brewing is a new trend now. With like uh, it is a trend. We are contract brewing, but I would say infrastructure issues are like in shambles. So it's a thing. And Jack is and becoming Jack's, like the new trend. Jack stocked up on cans because they oh, for, they like foresaw the can shortage. So like a year and a half ago, they ordered like thousands of extra cans. So they're good. They're Perfect never example. good. All the aluminum comes from China. Yeah, yeah. And you can acquire and send out. And we don't even have bottles because the price to get like so expensive. Fucking shipment of bottles. No one wants bottles anymore, anyway. <laughs> Except for the big barrel aged sours that I that I serve. You know? That's true. Those are specialty. Those are specialty yeah, right. bottles. There's a certain so, age. But no one, is no one under the age of like you know certain age for bottles. Right. Looking for bottles. This is bomber. I know. Yeah. Right when I started, bombers bombers are going out of style. Bombers. Do you guys have any questions about the maple brick? Do you like it? Yeah. yeah. We love it. That's very good. I think it's bombers. 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 Yeah. Yeah. First time. This is back to last. What's the age scale? Eight and a half percent. Oh, Did you oh this is a sneak up there. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. This is when I indulge. Oh, yeah, this is kind of low. Oh, yes. Yes. Oi. I actually like was trying to figure that out earlier, and I did not get an answer. So it's a local distillery. Local, local distillery. I I may make make. Where do you do it? So so the maple barrels come from a local um, syrup. They're making a bourbon bourbon barrel aged maple mixer, and then the bourbon barrels are from a local distillery. He did not disclose which distillery. I had to I had to figure that one out. 
but it's all local to, to Foster because they, they, they want to stick with small companies, you know, source from, from you know, local. Yeah, I feel like these bourbon. This one's so really Oh, definitely. Especially like Have you had the dragon's milk? Dragon's milk. It's from New Holland. It's like one of the top selling bourbon barrel aged stouts out there. It's like 11%. It's freaking phenomenal. Wait, what's the, what's the, um, is it the, uh, New, New Holland. They're out of Michigan. Do you sell dragon's milk? Not. We used to. I used to sell dragon's four years ago. Dragon's milk is like one of the best for the village. Yeah, it's on market. I've had it. Check it out. Do you like it? Ooh. Ooh, really? yeah. I had it years ago, back in like 2015. It yeah. was like dragon's milk. And is it a stout? It's a stout. Yeah, I remember it being a stout. And oh, it was so good. The only thing is, I feel that like with. This one's really good, the, mm -hmm. the one we just had. I just see that a lot of times, like when the beer gets on the higher octane level of the alcohol, it's either very sweet and mellow, it's very mellow, or it's a slap to the face every time you yeah, drink yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one, you can taste the alcohol, and one, you really don't. The one that you really don't taste the alcohol, that's the one I'll get you. That's the, that's the sneaky one. That's the sneaky beer. That's the sneaky beer. This is a sneaky beer. I like it, but it's like, ooh, if you're like, oh, this is nothing. And then also you wake up the next day and there's a pig wearing your pants. We just had, I think, the same time we had that guy left at from Oscar Blues. And it was like two, two maple leaves. It wasn't a bourbon barrel. Yeah, I feel like the maple is like very much on the back end. Yeah, like at the very end, and it's not overly sweet. They do a really good job. I'm just like, every day I'm like more and more impressed with all, like especially looking into this, like doing my background studying for this event. I'm like, wow, like they really go into it. Your experience about that, the Japanese blogger, I went to the, I think Miller's also was an island. And uh, they were like, oh, oh Miller, that beer, you got a piece of mac, but if you get that beer, it's so good. And they got you sure, actually, that's where we're going to get the box, so we're going to have it. Yay! Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. I went to Miller's today, and because they had it on draft, like, all the liquor stores in the area brought in that beer in Japan. And it was like the only jacks that they had, and I was like, hey, let me get some more in here. You sold more? Yes. So, well, Miller's did the, said they would keep a jacks line on for me. And then bring a Springdale. And then everyone around was like, yeah, let's bring in more jacks. So I'm just trying to build the brand. Does Springdale put a lot of sour? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we do a barrel aged sour program. Um, those are coming out next month. If you want to sample anything, I will bring it to you. Uh, yeah, and six months are only 110, which is crazy. 110. Super great value for the for like the cost of everything that was like to make. You know, I went to the Jack's um, brewery and they just have like 20 to 30 barrels upstairs just sitting with experimental stuff. They're like, we have no idea how this is going to turn out, but we're going to see how it goes. I, the first time I went to Springdale was actually in Rothschild. You know, it had a lavender and lemonade. Lavonade! And I like, I was like, I need to need this. They're so popular in New England, like people are like, what's your next sour? What are you doing? So the lavenade is a lavender lemonade sour. It is one of their most popular beers. It's available all summer long. Um, and yeah, they just they make amazing sours. And they do really good barrel aged sours that come in the big bottles. So for me, it's just finding the right fit for those bottles because certain stores, you know, nobody looks at the bottles anymore. Like those big bottles are just out of style. But then certain stores, it's like people go there to eat. So I'm excited to be with the brand, and I really appreciate you guys coming out tonight and listening to me stumble over my words. Thanks everybody for coming out. Beer Club again. Um, nice, nice night of small, but nice. Um, it's cold out. It's cold out. Yeah. Getting uh, cold.
What I liked about uh, Jack's Abbey and Springdale, as somebody who's on here, um, is that for you know, for rest on other person, that there's a lot of L, like um, so many breweries. Well, not so many, but some breweries that are, you want you want stuff from them. And uh, I mean, Magnify is actually one. Uh, it's very hard to get anything down here. Um, so I appreciate that they send product here, and it's up to us to go in and ask for it and buy it. Um, so, with that said, go out and into the into the world and ask for Jack's Abbey oh, and Springdale. Please, for me. For her, so if her job's on the line. Right? I mean, <laughs> You're paying uh, my bills. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm tangled in the spiderweb. Tis the season. Uh, um, thank you all for coming out again. Thank uh, you. I want, just for the hell of it, I, I discovered this beer. Uh, it's uh, Evil Twin Grape Soda. Oh my god. And it's fucking phenomenal, I think. So I just want to pour it a little bit for everybody so they can try it. Like, Sorry. So not, you're not going to get it again. And I just want to share the love of uh, grape soda with you. Thank you. All right, uh, so before I get electrocuted, thank you very much. I'll see you next month. Uh, wait around for a minute, I'll, I'll come pour you some beer. All right, it's right there. It's right, that's what I'm saying, it's right there. Yeah, I love it. I love it.